Hello fellow mutants, fellow mutants, welcome back to another video. In this vid, we're going to talk about the 10 most important battles from the IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Of course, this being a Ninja Turtles story and me being a huge Ninja Turtles fan, you guys couldn't tell by my uh, username. Yeah, I'm excited. As you see somebody passing out or doing their thing in a corner. Anyways, while the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise as a whole has been captivating audience for 40 years at this point, no one of not one of the many iterations of the series had anywhere near that much time to establish itself. Even P Kevin Eastman, Peter Layer's original comic book series, we saw print across four decades suffered from separate release dates and stretches of time without any new material. That being said, IDW's still ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have redefined the entire franchise in over a decade. Considering the series' following story and numerous branches, this isn't at all that surprising. However, its impact on the wider franchise is still impressive. Even more so are some of the battles that these specific incarnations of the Heroes in the Half Cell have faced, which helped make the IDW's take on the franchise so unforgettable in the first place. And I have to say, the Ninja Turtles as a whole has definitely made a huge impact on my life. So let's read. Um, I guess we're doing like the 10 most, did I say 10? Yeah, 10 most important battles. So number 10 is Baxter Stockman's result of almost caused the turtles everything. Baxter Stockman isn't just another iconic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles villain, TMNT villain. He is arguably the very first true nemesis of the Heroes in the Half Cell ever had. Other than rely on any upward strength of his own, Baxter Stockman puts his genius level intellect to use by creating a variety of mechanized monstrosities. None of the none of were of a threat to IDW Turtles than his minefield ordinance unarming system enhanced robots or mousers. The turtles first came into conflict with the pint-sized terrors in the pages of 2012's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number six, by Kevin Eastman, Tom Moss, Dan Duncan, and Ronda Patterson. With the help of Old Hob, Stockman unleashed the swarm of mousers into the turtles' subterranean lair, leading a battle that run the course of two entire issues. But the, by the time the dust had settled, the turtles were all lucky to have survived the encounter while Stockman had, well, Stockman were replete with the new information that he could use to his advantage to his ongoing war against the heroes in the half show. So that's number 10, the Stockman battle. Number nine is their fight against Lash introduced them to objective tragedy. While Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael are the four core members of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there are from, four from the only turtles to grace their own series. One of the most important auxiliary Turtles is Lash, whose IDW duration was bigger, better, and ultimately better than any person that came before him. In the IDW continuity, the Hulking Mutant Snapping Turtle was created by Baxter Stockman's Stockton. Before Slash could even weaponize, could even be weaponized or experimented any further, April O'Neil unwittingly freed him. In the following weeks, Slash lurked in the shadows where he could, and by his own nature, ended up terrorizing everyday New Yorkers, along with 
Along the way, Flash witnessed the turtles in the action, inspiring him to take up a black bandana of his own. In 2012, it shows this number 15. The turtles, and you guys can read who what who were credited in that. The turtles and Slash cross paths properly for the first time, leading to an epic confrontation between the ambiguous fighter. Tragically, Slash was stabbed uh, down through the shoulder by Leonardo, which the latter had an intended whatsoever. After watching Slash seemingly fall into the water to his death, the turtles were left enraged, confused, and heartbroken by their experience about for vastly different reasons. So that's interesting. Okay. So, number eight, City Fall marked a turning point for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 2013's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is in number 21. Again, you can see the people who were credited by the people thing I highlighted, quickly kicked off by the events of IDW City's fall storyline, City Fall storyline. By reuniting the Shredder with his long lost love, the Marshall which Kinsoon. Over the next seven issues, Kinsoon, Shredder, and Karai manipulated the various figure and forces within New York City's underworld to in a bid to make the Foot Clan into the city's most prominent force. Unfortunately the, for the Turtles, the Melon foe succeeded in doing exactly that. The villain even managed to sink their hooks into one of the Turtles' own by brainwashing Leonardo and giving him giving rise to his Dark Leo persona. Throughout the course of City Fall, readers watched that split the Splinter Clan and their allies waged war on the Foot Clan across nearly every battlefield that the city had to offer. City Fall also drew out less ominous threats, such as the Purple Dragons, ensuring that the conflict spilled over into the streets rather than being relegated to the shadows. In the end, the Turtles were forced to retreat to the relative safe the and Northam. Northampton. The story definitely proved that the turtles weren't shielded in nearly as much flat armor in the IDW universe as fans may have expected. Okay, okay. So number seven. Attack on Technodrome was the first time uh, the IDW turtles really saved the world. Dude, the, I like this image. I know I've been like been like commenting on the images, but dude, this image right here between Leonardo and Raphael Sai with Krang looks badass. So for a long, for as long as Krang has been part of the TMT TMT franchise, his towering Technodrome has stood as a testament to the true power wielded by the diminutive alien menace. And while the Technodrome hasn't always um, played a prominent role as a weapon to itself, IDW's version of it absolutely has. In fact, the Technodrome has even been a problem as recent as 2023, though it was almost a decade prior when IDW's turtles first learned exactly how big of a problem it really poses. 2014's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he's in number 41, jump started IDW's attack on the Techno Turtles. The display of the non-informious constructive capabilities together with Baxter Stockman, Krang repaired and reconfigured, reconfigured, sorry, the Technodrome, leaving them the weapon that could terraform the entire planet, leaving it a barren wasteland remnant, reminiscent to Krang's homeworld of Ultramanon. 
Thankfully, this destruction was relegated to Burnout Island. Crane was imprisoned on the planet Neutrino with his crimes, yet neither of those outcomes could make up for the horrors the turtles had seen the technical technodrome wreck. Ooh, okay. See, I, I haven't read any of these comics yet. This just really make me want to read, go back and read. The latest Nestoril comic that I picked up at the moment of this recording is um the Janaka um comic, which is the first time like the Janaka character was introduced and charged in sex. So, uh, IDW's pension storyline redefined the turtles' place in their, their own world. This right here, Leonardo Dallas Ellis Rider, looks cool. Let's see this. In an immediate aftermath of the experience of the Technodrome, the turtles were caught up in another world shaking event in the form of. IDW's vengeance storyline. Most like City Fall saw the Foot Clan take hold over New York City. Vengeance saw the, the Splinter Clan dealt multiple devastating blows to their opponent. Though many, in fact, that the Foot Clan would never be seen again. Beginning just after Bebop and Roxy's brutal assault on Darancello, the left the turtle. On the first of death, Benjamin saw the Splinter Clan come under siege in their own home once more, only to respond that greatly ferociously than fans had ever seen. Ferocity, sorry. Following the multiple attacks lobbied at his family by the Foot Clan, Splinter took it upon himself to challenge the Shredder to the ancient ritual known as Gaunt. What ensued a series of individual bouts of combat. So Leonardo clip Coria's wings, Delantelo permanently blind, the mutant ham hammerhead Bolgion, and the shredder dissipated sorry, decapitated by a splinter, making way to the latter to this place as the leader of the foot clan. Dude, that's interesting. That's cool. And then number five, the Triceraton invasion tore the entire planet apart. 2017's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's soon 76, came hot at the heels of the trial of crime, which saw the world would be dictator gruesome consumed by the mutant leatherhead rather than serve a proper sentence for his crime. Unfortunately, this was not enough to ensure peace with the Triceratons, who had spent uh, so much time enslaved by the Ultron Empire. When a band of former land landed in the middle of New York City, it was clear that they had no intention of stopping there. As for as much of the trolls did during the events of the invasion of the Triceraton storyline, they took a backseat to the agents and soldiers of the Earth Protection Force of most occasions. Of course, this particular storyline was bigger than any other that IDW turtles have been part of up until then. At least in terms of the immediate global impact, apart from being objectively outmatched, invasion of the tech Triceratons saw that the turtles came in come come to terms with the fact that some battles were simply too big for them to keep contained in any manner. Okay. And Number four, City of War, re City of Warm redefined the Team NT Nintendo's entire world. I gotta say, this 
It's just like one of the coolest shots I've seen or pictures I had seen of the turtles in general. So City of War has some serious connections concerning the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise as a whole. While the original City of War, which has been remade and retold numerous times, was a basis for IDW City Fall, the publisher own take on the story of the same name wouldn't be this wouldn't begin until 2019's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue nine, number 93. IDW City of War involved every single faction that called New York City home, and by the time it was over, it was added several more. Though the storyline began with an otherwise ordinary outfit, bloody encounter between the Turtles and the Foot Clan, things quickly became much more complicated than that. In the following issue, Spectre Stockman was elected as mayor, to the mayor's office and Old Hob, un, Old Hob un, unleashed a mutant bomb that transformed a large weight of New York City into Mutant Town. Kitchen, also very nearby, nearly resurrected. Her immortal father, the dragon on the earth. It was only because of Splinter's sacrifice that the dragon was defeated, marking not just the last battle he would ever fight, but quite possibly the most important turning point of the history of the IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Dude, that's it. Cool. And Derek, but cool. Jasper Barlow introduced an, a breed of horror to the IDW's Team and T universe. The heroes in the Hapso have tangled with the enemies over the years. But Dr. Jasper Barlow was a unique specimen, firmly a world renowned constructive surgeon. Barlow was transformed into a mutant mouse when Old Hop's mutant bomb fell. Dude, why haven't we seen a mutant mouse in its shows and any of the its turtle shows? Is it because they are like too afraid that the mutant mouse might be copyrighted by Disney? Is that it? <laughs> in the following years, Barlow made a home for himself in the shadow of of Munich Town began perfecting new techniques. At first, Barlow hoped to find a way to give mutants in need their humanity back, which seemed like a perfect, reasonable endeavor. Unsurprisingly, Barlow soon turned his attention to the malevolent practice, including turning on wintering subjects, on wintering subjects to grotesque. I'm going to try to say this word. I'm not of their former selves, technology, and whatever other Barlow had. This is exactly what led to the creation of the IDW's Venus de Milo, who was compromised who is comprised of carps of the punk frog Bonnie, Delantello's old Cora pace, pace, and a sword scale left behind in the wake of Dragon's Defeat. Was I heard this version of Phoenix de Milo is way better than the new next mutation Phoenix de Milo? And I am so ha have to like read this. What's it? Um, what they said, right? Oh, they are going to say issue number one forty three. There we go. Anyways, by the time things came to a head between the Turtles and Barlow on the page of two thousand twenty three's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue for one for one. Issue 413, I was trying to be cool by singing the theme song. Anyways, the villain had turned his predecessors 
procedures on himself, transforming a previously meek but twisted menace into an absolute threat in his own right. Okay, okay. Then IEW's at number two. IEW's Armageddon Games pushed the turtles past the Teenage Mutant Turtles. I think they're Miss Ninja past all previous limits. Despite everything that they had already lived through, but all the best. Despite everything they had already lived through up to that point, the Armageddon Games stood as the biggest event to ever engulf the Turtles and their world. And it's hard to imagine anything ever eclipsing it as such. Well, if they do a comic version of essentially the basis of Turtles Forever, that's like definitely one way I can imagine it um being nearly what's the word impossible to like one up. <laughs> Anywho, orchestrated by the Immortal Rat King, Immortal Rat King. Okay, the Armageddon Games was the latest iteration of the same kind of contest with the entirety of the Pantheon. Panthe- Theon Hughes to play and which they stopped partaking in for the sake of the entire world. After bringing together the turtles' worst enemies into the forms of Crank, Baxter Stockman, and Madame Noel, the Rat King embarked on the destructive crusade to leave the earth scorched and in ruins. In their quest to staff off staff off absolute destruction the turtles embrace their old enemy certain consume the former be- with the former becoming the splinter clan's new mentor in the ways of the arcane arts this drove a wedge between them and their longtime ally alpex yet even she was willing to solve her problem with the Foot Clan once she realized how grave the threat at hand was really was. When the Turtles and the Rat King finally came face to face for their final battle, the Splitter Clan were backed up by every ally possible and one unlike member of the Pantheon who ensured their victory. And the number one, which is Apparently, the most important, the big bad, the most badass is the fight against Armageddon was a fight for the future of the IDW's TMT. Do they have any, like, better pictures of Armageddon? It doesn't look like they have. So Armageddon's immune target, if memory serves them right. Through the, there were never any doubt that the Rat King was one of the, was one masterminding the defense of Armageddon Games. His place as the greatest threat of the Turtles' future was surprisingly unstripped by the time traveling mutant Melagon, known as Armagon. During his travels through time, Donatello discovered the threat of Armagon. Kicking off one of the hero's darkest chapters while ushering in the beginning of a whole new era for the heroes in the half shell. The ongoing battle against the Armageddon. Armagon, sorry. The ongoing battle against Armagon wasn't just one of the most important that the Turtles have ever fought. It was one of the most mind-bending experiences that ever lived through. Over the course of their fight, the turtles encountered future versions of themselves, possible successors to their legacy, and the most desperate versions of some of their closest allies. Worst of all, even through the turtles could quell on the threat of Arm- Armagon, they couldn't prevent the profound damage that he and his twisted follower inflicted along the way. Now, 
that the fight is over, the turtles have been left to reconcile with whatever their future holds, knowing that everything they have seen is ready have seen is ready is coming to pass for reasons far far worse than they could ever imagine. So that was that was a really interesting um breakdown. I like ranky system, I should say. I didn't expect it to take me this long. I'm happy it did. Um I pre- for someone who like has to have a chance yet, because I haven't had a chance to like like ha- someone who has to have the chance to like go to read these comic comics mostly because I've had like the chance to, like spend my money on that many comments comics at the very moment. It makes me really want to go and read these stories because, oh my God, these stories sounds really interesting. And if I do um, get these comics that this list mentioned, you can bet your bottoms that this Ninja Turtle fanboy over here, who so very much will most likely do a review on that said comics, but anyways, what do you fellow mutants think about said comics? Let me know in the comment section down below. Love y'all. Wonderful day. Better one another. I'll catch y'all later.